Eisenstein writes, quote, now this is where we're going to start to slay some gods, but we're also going to free you from traps that were built into your minds a long time ago. He writes, in any case, one's notion of spirit is that of something separate and unworldly that yet can miraculously intervene in the material affairs and even animate and direct them in some mysterious way. It's hugely ironic and hugely significant that the one thing on the planet most closely resembling the foremost conception of the divine is money. It is an invisible, immortal force that surrounds and steers all things, omnipotent and even limitless, an invisible hand that it is said makes the world go around. Yet money today is an abstraction, at most symbols on a piece of paper, but usually mere bits in a computer. It exists in a realm far removed from materiality, and in that realm it is exempt from nature's most important laws. For it does not decay and return to the soil as all other things do, but it is rather preserved chainless, changeless in its vaults and computer files, ever growing thanks to interest. It bears the properties of eternal preservation and everlastingness, both of which are profoundly unnatural. Looking down from the Olympian heights, Eisenstein writes, the financiers called themselves masters of the universe, channeling the power of the God they serve to bring fortune and ruin or ruin upon the masses, to literally move mountains, raise forests, change their course, to change the course of rivers, cause the rise and fall of nations. Like the clergy of a dying religion, they exhort their followers to greater sacrifice while blaming their misfortunes either on sin, greedy bankers and irresponsible consumers, or on the mysterious whims of God, the financial markets. What we call recession, earlier cult cultures might have called God abandoning the world. Money is disappearing and with it another property of spirit, the animating force of the human realm. At this writing, all over the world machines stand idle, Eisenstein writes. Factories have ground to a halt, construction equipment that sits derelict in the yard, parks and libraries are closing and millions go homeless and hungry while the housing units stand vacant and food rots in the warehouses. Yet all the human and material impulse inputs to build the houses, distribute the food, and run the factories still exist. It is rather something immaterial, that animating spirit which has fled. Money. He continues, we do not realize that our concept of the divine has attracted to it a God that fits that concept and given its sovereignty over the earth by divorcing soul from flesh, spirit from matter, and God from nature, we have installed a ruling power that is soulless, alienating, ungodly, and unnatural. So when I, Eisenstein, says, speak of money being sacred, I am not invoking a supernatural agency to infuse sacredness to the inert, mundane objects of nature, I am rather reaching back to an earlier time before the divorce of matter and spirit. Eisenstein writes, the financial crisis we are facing today arises from the fact that there is almost no social, cultural, natural and spiritual capital left to convert into money. Centuries of near continuous money creation have left us so destitute that we have nothing left to sell. And I might add, we sold our souls a long time ago. So let me be clear today, as I stand here on this podium waiting for retribution, I am here to kill your God today. I'm here to spit in the face of a God that separated man from this planet by giving us dominion. Because it was in the separation and charging the human race and saying we had the right to rule over nature that has made everything else possible and has made us accept and swallow an infinite growth monetary paradigm that even as it's dying, we are conditioned to look to for our salvation 
even while it's standing on our chest and strangling us. We did a real fine job of being masters of this planet, didn't we?